Hello, welcome to the video on solving literal equations and formulas. This will be a lesson on this topic, and let's go ahead and take a look at our objectives here. So the first thing I want to do is, is define literal equations and formulas. And then next we're going to understand the process to solve a literal equation and formula for a particular variable. Now two things before we get going. The first is you really already need to know how to uh, solve multi-step equations. And I mean really be comfortable with um, all the inverse operations, distributive property, um, etc. Okay, so if you struggled a little bit with solving equations, you're going to have a tough time here. A matter of fact, I wouldn't even really recommend watching this lesson until you go back and know how to solve multi-step equations. Okay, which means that you're going to have to know how to solve one-step and two-step equations. But assuming that you feel good about um, your equation solving ability. The second thing is, is your kind of expectations um, as we study this lesson. Now it's just been my experience that a lot of students um, initially find this to be a little bit difficult. Some students know it's not a problem, but a lot of students initially find this to be a little bit difficult because it's a little bit abstract. I'm not, I don't want to scare you away, on, uh, make this lesson to be more than than it, it's going to be, but it's, it can be a little bit abstract. Okay, so the thing to do here is just start with the more basic um, examples, okay, and then kind of work your way up. And if you get confused a little bit, you know, revisit the lesson. Okay, so with all that said, let's go ahead and define what a literal equation and formula is. Okay, a literal equation and formula are basically the same thing. Okay, it's essentially a an equation. Okay where the variables represent a quantity. So we find formulas, for example, all over science and business. So I have an example of one here, that the rate times time equals distance, okay? So for example, let's say this car here, let's say this guy's going 60 miles per hour and he travels for one hour, okay? So using this formula or this equation where the variables represent a quantity, okay, in some sort of uh, physical relationship, I can actually figure this out. So his rate was 60 miles per hour, his time was one hour, and his distance is going to be the product of those two. So 60 times one, it's going to be 60 miles. That's how far he traveled, okay? So this formula, okay, I can write this as a literal equation as R times T equals D. Okay, that's the formula. Now, what if I gave you another problem? I said, I want to know how long it took this, this guy. Okay, he went, let's say, 145 miles. Okay, and he was doing, say, 55 miles per hour. How long did it take him? So now I would be interested in time. So to figure that out, I would go ahead and plug this information into my formula. But really what you want to be doing is you want to rewrite this same formula in terms of t, in terms of time, because this is what you want. Okay, this time where we're looking for distance, our first problem, but if I want to use this formula and solve for time, I want to basically solve for the t in this equation. So that would look like this, t equals d over r. Okay, so taking a formula, an equation, and rewriting it in terms of another variable okay, as in this case we were solving for D, in this case we we're solving for T, is the whole essence of what we're studying in this particular lesson. That's what we mean by solving these literal equations and formula for a given variable. And you can, of course, see the application, okay? All right, so how do you solve for a given variable in a literal equation or formula, okay? All right, so here's the steps, and then we'll go ahead and get into some examples and then, um, of course, we'll practice this, and, and hopefully this will all come together for you. The first and most important thing, okay, to solve these uh, formulas, okay, and literal equations, is to think of the variable to be solved for as the only variable in the equation. Okay, this is huge, and we'll talk about this here in a second in this example. But think of the variable to be solved for as the only variable in the equation. So therefore, if I'm solving for t in this equation here, I want to think of as, of R and D as numbers, okay? The second thing is, 
you need to take the same steps as you were as you would take if you were solving a multi-step equation treating all other variables with the exception of the variable you're solving for as numbers okay then last but not least is you want to use parentheses to group sums or differences and we'll talk about that when we encounter um, an example such that we can actually um, emphasize this point so let's go ahead and look at this first example r times t equals d so if i told you to solve for t what i'm asking you to do is to rewrite this equation in terms of t in other words t equals and then whatever the case is going to be okay whatever the right hand side of the equation is going to be so remember our first step is we want to think of the variable we're going to solve for as the only variable so in this case if i want to solve for t i'm going to think of t as the only variable so r and d i'm going to just for temporarily in my mind i'm going to think of them as kind of numbers okay so here would be an example of treating r and d as numbers so we can actually think of let's just make some numbers up let's say r was a i'm going to think of it like a two i still have my t because that's a variable and maybe d like six so if i gave you the equation two t equals six and i said solve for t and you say okay that's a basic one step equation all i have to do is divide both sides of the equation by two so t would be equal to 6 divided by 2, you would be correct. Okay, so this is the whole idea here. Okay, so here's our t, here's what we want to solve for. And if you look what I did, okay, here is I took the number in front of the t, which was 2, and I divided both sides of the equation by it. Okay, I'm going to treat my variables here, r times t equals d, the same way. Okay. So here's my t. I want to solve for t, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by r. Okay, that's it. It's actually very, very straightforward. Okay, so the same step that I'm taking, I'm taking over here. So I'm going to get t is equal to d divided by r. All right. So does that make sense? Okay. Now, of course, you can't, you know, communicate back to me and stuff. But if it does, if you get this, you say, oh yeah, all right, this is pretty easy then you're going to be well on your way to mastering this. This is what this is all about. Okay, now, of course, the problems are going to get more challenging, but this is the whole key idea. So what if we had another equation? What if our equation was r plus t equals d? And I said solve for t. Okay, but this time it was r plus t equals d. Okay, how do you think we would do that? All right, so what I would do, let's just think of, let's just make some numbers up here. Let's say R was like a 3, we had our T here, and let's say D was 7. To do this problem, I would subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, and I would get T is equal to 7 minus 3, okay? Well, that's exactly what you're going to do, okay? You're going to take the same steps, okay? And if you're starting to see this, you'd say, okay, I, now I'm starting to, you know this procedure starting to click so hopefully you're at that point so r plus t equals d if i'm solving for t okay what i did was i subtracted three from both sides of the equation here which represented the r so i'm going to subtract r from both sides of the equation just like this okay notice i'm just taking the same steps i want to get t is equal to d minus r okay all right so I'm going to assume that you understand these two basic examples. And if you do, then let's, uh, I think you're going to be able to just build your skill set up and, and then, you know, doing these problems will become second nature. And it is critical that you know how to manipulate these formulas and rewrite a formula in terms of another number. It's just all over science and, um, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of equations in business require you to do this also. Okay. All right, so let's move on to some examples. So let's go into solve for x. I have 4x plus y equals 8. If I said solve for x, I'm going to treat the 4 and the y, um, and of course the 8, all of those as numbers. So essentially, you could be thinking of this as oh, 4x plus, I'm just making numbers up here for, for y, say 6 equals 8. So this is just a basic two-step equation. So to solve this, I would subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. 
I would get 4x equals 2, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and divide both sides of the equation by 4. So I would get x is equal to 2 divided by 4. That would be my answer. So the same steps are going to apply. Okay, I'm going to do some subtraction, and then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation. Okay, so this is the key. It's the, it's the kind of mental discipline or your ability to kind of think of these um, other variables as numbers just temporarily uh, to solve for this particular variable. So I'm going to solve for x. That's the only variable I'm going to think of as a variable per se in my um, equation. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract y. Okay, and the way I do it is just like as if I'm solving a multi-step equation. So this is going to leave me with 4x equals 8 minus y. Now, let me go up here real quick and talk about this step three. Okay, we want to use sums, or excuse me, in sums and differences, we want to use parentheses. So what I mean, here I have a difference, eight minus y. I want to go ahead and I want to put, I want to put parentheses around that. Okay, you want to get in the habit of doing that. So I want to solve for x. Okay, so I'm still thinking of as x as my only variable. So to get x by itself, I need to divide both sides of the equation by four. So x would be equal to 8 minus y over 4. Okay, so what I did was to rewrite this equation, this literal equation, in terms of x. Okay, so if you're understanding, then excellent. Okay, you're doing a great job. Let's move on and take a look at another example. This time we're going to go ahead and solve for h. So area equals 1 half base times height. That should look familiar to uh, most of you out there. That's the uh, formula for the area of a triangle. So I'm going to think of h as the only formula, or excuse me, the only um, variable. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this 1 half. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Now, remember, okay, if you're really good at solving equations by now, multi-step equations, I can do whatever I want to do on the left-hand side as long as I do it to the right-hand side. Okay, so this time I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2 just to get rid of this 1 half on the right-hand side. So that leaves me with 2a equals, and the 1 half times 2 cancels out. I just left with b times h. Okay, so once again, I'm h is my only variable that I'm thinking of as a variable. So I have that b in front of the h. So to get rid of that, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by b. So that leaves me with 2a over b equals h. Okay, and that's it. All right, so we, we solve for h. And the way we say that is we uh, rewrote the equation in terms of h. Okay, that just means that we solve for h. That language means the same thing. Okay? All right, so if you're understanding, excellent. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, last example. So this time I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to be thinking of, of this y here is the only uh, variable in my formula. So what I need to do is I need to divide both sides of the equation by x. Okay? So when I do that, I get y by itself. Okay, so if I divide both sides of the equation by x, right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking 3 divided by x plus 1, and, and I'm dividing that entire thing by x. Okay, so you see what's going on? I'm dividing both sides of the equation by x. So really, that's going to look like this. y equals 3 over x plus 1 divided by x. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm dividing by x, or I'm dividing by x. You want to write it the way I did here, the second way. Because this way, you can actually simplify what's going on here much easier. So this would be 3 over x plus 1. I have a sum here, so I'm going to put parentheses around that. And when we're dividing fractions, recall if I have 1 third and I'm dividing it by, say, 2 fifths, how do I divide fractions? Well, I'm going to keep that first fraction the same. I'm going to turn this into a multiplication problem by flipping this. So this would be 5 over 2, and then I'm just going to multiply across. This would be 5, 6. All right, so I'm assuming you already know how to work with fractions. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, um, oh, you know, I'm not trying to 
minimize anyone's skill down there because a lot of students you know, uh, struggle with fractions, even in algebra, algebra two, and even in calculus. It just said because we don't use fractions all the time and, and uh, especially in the calculator generation, a lot of students will grab their calculator instead of doing things by hand. So if you forget, you know, just take a moment and think about it. Right, so we have three over x plus one divided by x over one. So I'm going to flip this around and turn this into a multiplication problem. So this is going to be 3 over x plus 1 times 1 over x. Okay, so I'm taking my division problem, okay, and I'm turning it into a multiplication problem, just as I did here. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and multiply my numerators and denominators. So I'm going to get 3, let's get ourselves some room here, over x plus 1 times x, or I can write that as, as x plus 1 times x. All right, so this last example was a little bit more challenging, but what we did here, go ahead and erase all of this, is we rewrote this equation in terms of y, or we solved for y. But your ability to do this is really, really critical, okay? So it's a little challenging, it's a little abstract because we have to temporarily think of these other variables as numbers and treat them that way. But if you can do this, then, you know, that's a real core skill that you've mastered. So let's wrap this up. So in review, uh, literal equations and formulas are used to show the relationship between quantities using variables. Okay, like as we talked about, rate times time equals distance. Okay, we're, we're showing a relationship, you know, these variables mean something. They mean some sort of quantity in science or um, um, some other branch um, discipline like um, business. Okay. The second thing is when we're solving equations with variables, okay, solving equations with variables is a key skill in math and science. Okay. I can't stress that enough because when you are, let's say, in a physics uh, class or chemistry class, you're going to be given formulas and you're going to be asked to solve for different, um, you know, to rewrite that formula in terms of another variable. So this is a real practical skill that you need to master. Then last but not least, when solving literal equations and formulas, always think of the variable you're solving for as the only variable in the equation. Okay, if you remember one thing from this lesson, that is the key um, concept. Okay, so if I ask you to solve for R, you're going to think of R as the only variable and treat everything else as a number. Okay, all right, so hopefully this wasn't too bad for you. Of course, you want to go ahead and practice this, but um, if you find yourself struggling, you know, review the lesson and figure out where your weak areas are at and improve. Okay, you definitely can master this and it's critical that you do because you are going to be facing a lot of situations where you're going to have to manipulate formulas in terms of one variable or the other. Okay, so keep working hard. We'll see you soon.